evening and welcome to the Her Sport YouTube channel. I'm your host, Deb Shaw, along with my trusty steed, Alana Kanan. Alana, how are you today? And back to you on weather, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Excited for these games we've got coming up. Um, very exciting. We're in with the big boys now, but we've got oh, a yeah. to go. The Republic of Ireland are placed. 25th, I believe. Exactly, yeah, and they were actually above that, Deb, if you remember. And interestingly, Scotland have gone above us. Now, yeah. I don't know if anybody remembers in recent history when Ireland played Scotland. Yes, Jesus Christ, it was close. <laughs> Do we remember? I had the hard palpitations to prove it. But oh, yeah. It was close, but yeah, they've gone above us in the rankings. We're now at 25th. And we had just like the slight little matter of playing like three of the top <laughs> 10 in the world. No problem. No yeah. problem. Not panicking at all. Luck of the Irish, dare we say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. We'll have to be counting on that, of course, because France are third, England are second, and Sweden sixth. Crazy. But, like, sure, everybody's saying this week in the media, and God, I hope they're right, that nobody wants to play Ireland because it would be a bit of a, I suppose, against the grain if we were to go on and win, and yeah. maybe it'll happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone loves an underdog story. Exactly. And also, we've heard the story all before at the World Cup. Everyone called it the group of death. Yet, they only conceded, was it two or three goals at the mm. World Cup as well? So they performed so well. And that's what I was actually thinking about, is that I'm excited for this. I can't wait to see them play. Exactly. And like even within that, obviously Ireland were the fourth seed within our group. But I imagine quite a lot of the teams would have wanted to avoid it, Ireland as well. Like we were coming off the back of a stellar Nations League B campaign coming in now to this other group. It'll get interesting surely because obviously, Deb, this is all the start of our Euro 2025 qualification I'm campaign. Excited. It'd be unreal to see Ireland there, wouldn't it? 100%. So as you say, those um, teams we're playing against, France, England, Sweden. Uh, we're going to have six, six match days against those three teams. You play once home, once away. So four in the group, the top two automatically qualify for the Euros, but okay. fear not, if we are third or fourth, you still have a chance. And I think that's probably the most interesting thing about being in Nations League A. Um, and our last campaign obviously put us in this yes. position that even if everything did go awry and we didn't finish in those top two positions, we'd still be, you'd imagine, fingers crossed, very likely to qualify for Euro 2025 because if we're not in those top two spots come the end of all those games, in the bottom two you then go into playoffs against Nations League B and C sides and um, they're in October, November and December. And if you remember, we won all of our games comfortably in Nations League B. So you would think, you would think come the final draw on December 16th that we'd be there. Hopefully. Hopefully. Ah no, we got this. We got this. What are you excited for? I'm actually excited for a lot because, like we were on about there, these are the big boys, but we're here to play now. And um, I think we've proved that we can probably play on this stage. The one thing I would have a little bit of, I suppose, trepidation about would be that a lot of the fan base that we've accumulated over the last six months to a year, um, especially during the Nations League B campaign, might be under the impression that we're going to absolutely sail this. Yes. That is not the case. Um, and like 100% welcome everybody that came in. Yeah. Delighted to see you. Get on the bandwagon and stay here. But um, yeah, this is going to be very, very difficult. So I wouldn't be under that impression at all. Yeah, I am excited for the style of play. Mm. And I know that you're going to get into it and mm. I can't wait to hear what you're going to say. Definitely. But based on their performance... At the Nations League, we saw them attack a lot more, but also at the World Cup, we know that they know how to defend. Mm. So with the recent additions, the new management and just the eagerness to play amongst the best now, it's like, I can't wait to see this new Irish squad, dare mm. we say. It's also like, like you mentioned there, Deb, the management can have such an impact. Yeah. And we saw the team, they said in the media, and you could visibly see it as well, they're yeah. a lot happier yes. in the last um, few games there. So hopefully they'll be able to carry that in now. Obviously, like we mentioned, um, France, England and Sweden to play. We France up first, away Friday the 5th, that's in Mets, And then England on Tuesday the 9th in the Aviva. <laughs> we also have Sweden in the Aviva in the following window and you can actually buy tickets, can't you Deb? Yes, you can. 
You can buy the tickets for the England game as a solo event if you want. That's, as we said, on Tuesday the 9th. Um, so get your tickets now for that. You can also buy it in a duo match pack along with the Sweden game, which again is in the Aviva. I think another clap is due. We'll be there, we'll be there. Um, and yeah, so those are the France and England, the first two games. Then we play Sweden back to back, home and away. Interesting yes. sort of draw there. And then France and England again, the opposite way around. So France at home, England away, and then we'll know where we will land. But um, especially to be back in the Aviva, Deb, it's a big deal. It's a huge deal, especially coming off of their last time mm. that they were there, although it was technically the first time against Northern Ireland. The atmosphere was absolutely beautiful. I remember you had a smile on your face from start to finish, mm. literally leaving the place. You were mm. still smiling. So nearly crying, yeah, as nearly well. crying. A mix of well. the two. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. Alana was there. We just let her have her moment. <laughs> you know I mean? So, but if you haven't seen that video, be sure to check it out. Um, but yeah, as Deb mentions, it is a big deal to be in the Aviva. Obviously, they're kind of in that middle stage now where they're trying to make the jump to Tala. Yes. Uh, the France home game is actually an interesting one because that won't be in the Aviva nor Tala because it looks like Shamrock Rovers have a game to play there uh, come that date. Okay. But um, that means we could possibly see the women's national team brought around the country, which would actually be class. You know, yeah. just talk of Cork or wherever it might be. I think it'd be a good thing for it to be exposed outside of Dublin. I completely agree. Look, I'm not Irish myself, but I do know that I'm very lucky to be based over here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I do know that other sides of the country deserve a little bit of um, recognition. You yeah. know, they deserve the opportunity to see the players that they so admire and like not have to travel all those journeys. It's yeah. kind of like a little thank you as well, which I do love. Definitely. And speaking of being exposed to these great stars, we're mm -hmm. going to be exposed to quite a lot of them yes. come these games. Obviously, um, if people watch the WSL, the Champions League, whatever it might be outside of international football, you'll know there's a whole lot of stars in these teams. Now, obviously, we'll start off with England. That's probably the one yes. people are most familiar with, Deb, isn't it? Yes, 100%. Yeah, there's quite a lot of players there. Obviously, Mary Earps. If you don't know her on the pitch, you'll know her from the Nike saga at this stage. Uh, Lee Williamson, Kira Walsh, Lauren James, Alessa Russo, Ella Toon, Alex Greenwood, Lucy Rons. Millie Bryce. Could go on. <laughs> We're going to see all of them, which I, I'm excited for, also scared for, but we'll have to see. What, uh, what that brings France-wise then, obviously you have Wendy Reynard, Le Sommer, Diani, Katoto, again, same kind of case. And then Sweden, same crack again, obviously of Rolfo, Asalani and Blackstenius as well. So that's not even to mention, there's a whole lot of players we didn't even touch on there, Deb. So oh, that's crazy. We are going to get that star factor in these Nations League games. So, Alana, you were talking about all those stars. You told me before we sat down that you prepared the Combined Eleven for us. Mm. Can you tell us more about that? Combined XI, I'll run you through the rules just very quickly. There has to be two players from each squad. So that's two players minimum from France, England, Ireland and Sweden in the team. Um, I've also gone with that you can't have two players in the same line of the formation. So you can't have two French defenders or two English midfielders, any of this crap. Because it would just be too easy otherwise. And as I say, I have to transfer my headache onto you. So um, with that in mind as well, you're able to pick whatever formation you want. I've gone with a 4-3-1-2 or I suppose kind of a 4-4-2, whatever way you want to look at it. 4-3-3, three, three, you could also call it. <laughs> whatever way you want to look at it, uh, we'll go with that. But in goal, we'll start off there. I suppose that was sort of one of the easiest picks, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a no-brainer. Mm, a no-brainer is right. So I've gone for Mary Earps in that. Um, if, you don't, if you remember from a previous reaction video, Deb had a fantastic poem about Mary Earps. <laughs> go Cut to that. <laughs> You're a presenter here today, but you're also a poet and you know it. I am Debbie Shakespeare. Screw the Shaw. So, hear this, all right? And let me know in the comments below. Mary Mary, quite contrary. Herbs got Nike to fold. She pulled up her socks, told everyone to f off, and now her jersey is sold. Thank you. Thank you. Out. It's sold out. The flashbacks are hitting in there. Now, the back line is where I had probably the most, um, I suppose, indecision towards. As you can see here, I've scribbled out quite a few times, but I've gone with McCabe, obviously. So that was my Irish pick. 
Um, Wendy ran out, another, I suppose, kind of given. Um, but then trying to fit in the different players from the different squads, I've gone with Williamson. Again, probably another easy pick, such mm. a leader on the pitch. Yeah. Anyone would have her in their team. And then I've gone with Bjorn in the right back position. Now, she's been a bit of a funny one because obviously, um, if you're familiar, centre mid, kind of centre defensive mid, slash centre back, slash right back. She's very versatile. So I'm going to utilise that versatility and put her in there at right back. Obviously, a Chelsea player as well. So few people might be familiar. And then for my midfield, I had to go at Rolfo. Back off the injury, I'm sure she'll be looking to hit the ground running. And, you know, such a presence she's been for Sweden. Uh, Diani, the same could be said for her in the French setup. I've gone for O'Sullivan in the attacking midfielder position. Again, we've I'll quite often talk about Deb. You know, it's interesting. We love to see Denise in the 10 as opposed to the 6. Mm -hmm. And when she plays with the likes of Megan Connolly, she's able to do that because Megan does the defensive work, yes. Denise does the attacking work. And that's what I'm hoping for here. But in Megan Connolly's place in this scenario, I've gone for Kira Walsh. Okay. People will be arguing, where is Lauren James? And I hear you. I thought about it. But I was like, look, we're already gone so attacking. Diani is actually already out of position. She's kind of a striker, a centre forward kind of character. I yeah. put her on the right wing. Had to put her in there somewhere. So to combat all of that, who else could you put in the centre defensive position, defensive midfielder position, but Keir Walsh? So. There. Yeah, no. In fairness, your rules did make it very hard. <laughs> so I do agree with the way you completely stopped in the top where you love yourself a rule. So there you go. I completely, I have nothing to add here. It makes complete sense. And Thank you. Kira Walsh is very underrated. Yeah. Like she knows how to distribute the ball like no other. Yeah. So well, I'm sure I'll also be getting comments. Where is Lucy Brown's at right back? Mm. Again. Again, the rules. I the hear rules you. are the rules. I hear you, but them's the rules. <laughs> them's the rules. Them's the rules that I made up. So <laughs> give us your version again if you get the chance. And then up top, I mean, this would just scare the life out of you if you were a centre back. I've gone for Katodo and Mead. Obviously, Katodo, same kind of scenario, like I mentioned, coming back off the injury, will be looking to make a big impact on the international stage, have missed the Euros and the World Cup. Unbelievable player, can't wait to see her here. Mead, same exact scenario, uh, World Cup wise anyways, obviously a big player for England during the Euros and I'm sure she'll be looking to kind of, she has obviously been playing but looking to get back into good form with England now. So yeah, that's my combined XI, please give us yours below. Again, you'll have to adhere to my lovely rules there. Um, but I just thought it'd be too easy if you were just uh, doing all the same nationality, so yeah, give us yours below. Yeah, we kind of wanted to avoid the lionesses Lineup. Yeah. That's basically it. That's it. So, yeah, the good rules. Hard, you know, it's a little exercise. Get the brain <laughs> moving. Get the wheels turning. Okay, so our next segment is probably the title of this video. Is Ireland ready for League A? Mm. What do you think? I hope so. I really do hope so. I just wonder, as I mentioned earlier, I think it'll be quite an interesting, uh, I suppose, switch up because if you are just after getting involved in following the women's national team, you'll have seen us play at the World Cup quite defensively. Obviously, yes. then we saw uh, Vera Pau come out and Eileen Gleeson come in, internally, or if that's a word, <laughs> on an interim basis. Um, and then we cl played quite an attacking style under Gleeson, but I don't think we'll be able to stick with that in this new um, group because, as we mentioned, the calibre of the players is just so high. Uh, we have been experimenting with a four. I think we'll have to go to a five again. And while that could leave us in an okay position, obviously defensively, attacking, I think we're probably going to struggle. Now, mm. in Nations League B, we scored 20 goals. We scored 20 goals Massive. in Nations League B and conceded just two, six out of six wow. wins. Wow. So, as I mentioned, don't get used to that. That ain't going to happen this time around, I'm, I'm afraid. No, it's not. But again... I still think that, and probably a lot of people agree with me, the girls in green know how to defend. Mm. They've seen this before, so they can do it. Um, but the question is, can they get the ball at the back of the net? Can they score goals? Because yeah. you can defend all you want, but at the end of the day, you need to get the ball at the back of the net to yeah. win. 
And, and like with that said, Deb, against the teams in Nation C B, we often saw the likes of Katie and Denise play yes. alongside each other. We're not going to see that this no, time no, around. No. McCabe is going to have to drop back to that left back position. Yeah. But we do have a few newcomers that could we maybe do. provide some more options in the centre back position, especially. Yes, so if you've been following, you would have known that Anna Patton has joined the squad. Could you tell us more about her, actually? Definitely, yeah. We actually made a video about this on Friday, so be sure and check that out if you want to see it in depth. But Anna Patton is 24 years old. Young one. She has played for England at underage level. And actually, I was reading up on Twitter there, was one of their good players. Um, actually captained England at underage, underage level for a while. So you'd showcase her leadership ability there. She plays for Aston Villa now. Previously played for Arsenal. So this is the type of person we're dealing with here she's going to be a fantastic addition I imagine and um, especially when you compare it with the likes of you know Caitlin Hayes we've got in at centre back there recently you know it would have been I suppose touted to Ireland after the World Cup like do we have a bit of an age in defence um, and yeah. obviously Louise yeah. Quinn, Niamh Fahey, Diane Caldwell I mean fantastic players and such servants to Ireland and I hope we see them for time to come yet but they're not going to be around forever and it's brilliant to have these other options that will be around for, I suppose, the next yeah. five, ten years. Deb. Look, as a manager, you want to make sure that not all of your eggs are in one basket. Mm. So the moment that we saw Caitlin Hayes join the team and she immediately started, she was at the Aviva, she fit in the squad like a glove, really. Mm. Like everyone was actually chatting about how good she was. Yeah. So if it's going to be the same with Anna Patton, hell yes, bring it on. Yeah. And again, if it gives us that option where Megan Connolly doesn't have to play centre back, exactly. she can play CDM, then probably Denise can play 10. Yeah. It just opens up a whole lot of more options. Um, with that said, though, we do have some options decrease in the form of injury. Yes. And Ni Fahi, just this week, it was announced that she won't be linking up with the Ireland squad, um, having originally been named. Uh, obviously, Liverpool had said that she had have a, had a calf injury. Ireland wants to check that out for themselves and did confirm that she wouldn't be joining up. Erin McLaughlin in her place, though. Not a like-for-like like swap, but love to see that women's Premier Division representation. There's also a few more injuries as well, though. Yes, we've got Chloe Mustaki out. We've got Jamie Finn with an ACL injury. We've got Sinead Farrelly out as well. And Taro Hannan. Yeah. So that's a lot. So Taro Hannan, obviously the big Man City Sarah now. She'll be um, undergoing return to play protocol, but not quite ready yet, just yet. Farrelly, we haven't seen in a while, and I yeah. hope we do get to see her at some stage again, because, again, such an addition, as you mentioned, Jamie Finn, ACL, just in the midst of the last camp. Yes. Um, Mosaki then just announced this week that she won't be featuring for Bristol either, so a long-term hip injury for her. Um, I suppose the only thing that we must mention as well, Deb, is the last two games we played didn't go so well. A loss to Wales, a draw with Italy we'll take, uh, in fairness, but... How will they bounce back then? I don't know. <laughs> um, I just kind of... Like, you probably have to hope that with added pressure comes yeah. um, a clearer vision some, or focus, if that makes sense. Yeah. That's what I'm kind of gambling on. Yeah, we're speaking to you now. <laughs> with great listening. power comes <laughs> great responsibility. You know, but usually when your back is against the wall... It, it, is the time to perform. We've seen it again, same as with the World Cup. Like they actually didn't do that bad against the teams that they were holding up. I keep mentioning it, but that's I'm kind of compare like basing my perception or my prediction on their performance at the World Cup in comparison to the Nations mm -hmm. League, simply because of the level of competition that they had over For there sure. versus the Nations League. But we're not gonna end it on that negative of a note because I know we were just talking about injuries there. Aoife Mannion, <laughs> will she be back? Will we see her play? Yeah, and there's also the likes of Emmy Murphy, who yeah. we saw in the last camp for only a brief period. I think she's a very exciting player. Mm. And then obviously, Abby Larkin, Izzy Atkinson are coming into great form. There's plenty to be positive about. Um, and then with that as well, like we mentioned, while the teams that we're playing are brilliant, so are we. We got here for exactly. a reason. Exactly. Lionesses bring it on, no problem. <laughs> And speaking of the lionesses, if you can't make it to the Aviva, we created little at-home bingo cards for you, for you to play along and watch along. So it just will enhance your at-home WOSO experience. We were actually talking about this in the office. WOSO is women's soccer for anyone that doesn't know, but basically just print them out, 
bring them in front of you, put the game on and just watch along and tag us and it should be fun. Other than that, any final statements? No, I'll be bringing my bingo card to you. <laughs> we'll see you in the media section yeah. with your bingo card. Buy your tickets as well. You can buy the England match pack or the England game now available. Obviously, that will be on Tuesday 9th. And then you also have the double match pack, the England game, Tuesday 9th and then the Sweden game May 31st there's a double match pack available buy your tickets buy your tickets we'll be there anyways bye bye see you next time